Okay, today we're going to be going over a skeletal system, structure, and function. Um, not only are we going to be talking about the key functions of the skeletal system, but also the different structures on bones in general and the functions of each of these structures. Alright, today we're going to go over five of the major functions of the skeletal system. The first one is that it supports your body. Not only does it help keep your body upright, but it also gives support to some of your internal organs. Um, you can think about your bladder and how it's supported by the pelvis. Number two is that it protects your innards or your internal organs. Um, the first thing that I think of is your brain, which is protected by your skull. So can you imagine that if you didn't have a skull, um, just the tiniest little bump on the head could um, quite literally do brain damage, which would be quite bad, especially if you're clumsy like me and always hitting your head. Um, number three, production of blood cells. So red blood cells are actually produced by red bone marrow, which is located on the inside of a lot of your bones in your body. Um, and so that's a very important function to just make blood. Number four, it provides a place for muscle attachment. If you didn't have bones attached to muscles, you wouldn't be able to move as we know it. Um, you wouldn't be able to walk as we know it or stand upright because you wouldn't have the control to actually move your skeleton as we currently do. And number five, that it stores various minerals and salts. The primary one being calcium. If you remember back to the article that we read on calcium homeostasis, and it talked about how your body regulates the release of calcium from your bones into your body as you need it, and then can also restore the calcium back into the bones to kind of hang on for when the body needs to release it again. Um, so those are very important functions. Now working from the outside of the bone to the inside, um, the outside, the rough outer covering of the bone is called the periosteum. Peri, P-E-R-I, meaning around, and osteum, meaning bone. That makes sense, around the bone, the outer covering. Um, there's blood vessels and stuff that run through there, and you would think that if the red bone marrow on the inside of the bone is producing red blood cells, it's got to have blood vessels and pretty close and easy access, right, to get to the rest of the body. Continuing to work our way to the inner core of a bone, the next layer is a compact bone. And you can see from the diagram there that it's really dense bone that's just inside underneath the periosteum. Um, it's very strong and it's made of osteocytes. So osteo again meaning bone and sites meaning cell. Continuing to work your way inside the bone, the next layer is the spongy bone. As you can see, it kind of appears or has the appearance of a kitchen sponge. However, it is not soft and squishy like that. It's actually quite strong. Um, and then inside of that, on the inner core of the bone, you have your bone marrow. There are two types, both red and yellow. Red bone marrow is where red blood cells are produced. And yellow bone marrow mostly consists of fat. And the main function that I have been able to find is that it's a place to store fat. However, the neatest part about red and yellow bone marrow is that your body can actually convert yellow bone marrow into red bone marrow um, if there's been an increased demand for red blood cell production. And so it'll convert itself over to red bone marrow so it can produce more red blood cells until your body hits the level that it needs and then it can be converted back. Now that we've covered the major structures of an actual bone, you also want to learn some of the orientation terms associated with a bone. Um, the first one is epiphyses, right? And those are the two ends of a long bone. If you look at that picture, the two areas that kind of look like knobs on either side of the bone are the epiphysis. And then that long part in the middle, that long stretch that connects each of those two knobs is called the diaphyses. All right, and then there was no other good place to really put this within a lecture, so I kind of stuck it here. Um, but in terms of cartilage that you find at a joint, right? Of course, the main function of that is to sort of lubricate the joints, right? Minimize some of the friction so the bones aren't really grating on one another when you move at a joint. Um, but specifically, the cartilage that's found at a joint is called articular cartilage. So if you think about the cartilage that's in your ear. Right, where you can kind of flap your ear over it. That is not articular cartilage because that is not located at a joint. 
the final part of this lecture is to talk about fractures. Um, the term fracture is a reference term to any type of break in your bone, whether or not it's a small little hairline crack or a complete shattering of the bone. Fracture is sort of the general term that's used for this. Um, your body is typically able to repair fractures. Um, however, it's best to go to a doctor because if the bone isn't set right, meaning if it breaks into two pieces and those pieces aren't kind of aligned properly, it will heal, it just won't heal properly and you can have some really deformed bones. Um, if it's if it heals so improperly that it becomes a health risk, sometimes doctors will even re-break your bone to then set it back again properly. Um, so it's definitely worth going to a doctor over. Now as always, there's all sorts of different terms that you need to learn um, that deal with the different types of fractures. Uh, for instance, I mean if you went to a doctor's office and they said, okay you have a fracture, well that's great, that means you know you have some kind of break to your bone but what type of break specifically? Is your bone broken into two separate pieces? Is it just a little cracked is it sticking out of your skin? Although my guess is you would know that when you went into the doctor. Um, is it shattered? Did it twist when it broke? Right, and so these are different terms that kind of help describe that. The first one is simple, so a simple fracture. This is a type of fracture that does not break through the skin. The counter to this type of fracture is called a compound fracture. Compound fractures actually, the bone will break through the skin. It's pretty disturbing when you see it. Um, the next two are actually kind of another pair, sort of opposites or counters to one another. The first one is a complete fracture, and this describes a, when a bone is broken into two distinct different parts. Right? It's completely broken, if you will, a complete fracture. And the counter to that is a partial fracture. Um, there's some sort of break, but it's not into di two distinct parts. So a lot of times this is where your hairline fractures or things like that will come into play. All right, continuing on, the next type of fracture is called an impacted fracture. And this is when the broken ends of the bone are sort of wedged together or slammed together. Um, a lot of times this is due to some sort of blunt force, um, most often seen with things like car accidents. If you rear in somebody and your feet are stretched out in like the passenger seat, they might get impacted into one another where they're sort of forced into each other. Um, comminuted, right? This is basically a shattering of the bone when your bone is broken into many, many, many different fragments or pieces. And the final type of fracture that we're going over is a spiral fracture. Um, this fracture is most often associated with sports injuries. Um, if you think about you know, an athlete who's maybe making a fast break or taking a quick switch of direction and so they have all their weight, all their momentum, all their force going in this circular direction. They have a little bit of torque on their body and their body keeps going and their bones twist and just twist to the point so much torque and pressure is behind it that the bone itself actually twists itself broken.